Hey, what's going on, everyone? Welcome to another episode of the Wealth Building Educator. Tonight, have a very special episode. I have Mr. Emery Summerlin in the house, and I have my man, Broderick Williams. How you guys doing tonight? Good, good, good man. Good. Appreciate good. you having us. Yes, hey, man, I'm happy to have you guys here. We've been trying to do this for, what, about, about half a year now? Man, it's, it's, <laughs> it's been a while. It's been, it's been some months. <laughs> it's been some months, yeah, man. Yeah, but, man. you know, things have, have been kind of coming in between us, but now we finally had the opportunity to sit down and just chit-chat a little bit. Yes, the, these two brothers are, are just doing some big things in the Fort Worth area, and we actually met through working together as educators. Why don't you all tell us, tell the audience a little bit about yourselves? We're going to start right here to my left with Emery. Uh, my name is Emery Summerlin, uh, born and raised on the east side of Fort Worth. Um, I attended East Hills High School. Um, from there, I went to the University of North Texas. Um, uh, been married for 20 years. Um, got three children, man. Uh, I'm a serial entrepreneur um, in real estate. Um, I'm also CEO of a, a credit report business. Man, that's what's up. We definitely going to talk about the entrepreneurship tonight. So, yeah, man. What about you, uh, B? Broderick Williams, uh, native Fort Worth, Southside kid, uh, born and raised, Pasco High School, Morningside, elementary and middle, uh, Texas Western University. So my education ha has has been in in Fort Worth. I'm, I'm, I'm a Fort Worth uh, uh, love, a lover of Fort Worth. So uh, been here, but moved around a bit. Uh, worked in New York for a while. Worked in California. Worked in D.C. Uh, but came back and and and, and kind of devoted myself to the educational uh, uh, tapestry of Fort Worth. Gotcha, man. So what about? Marriage and kids with you, man. Uh, uh, newly married. Uh, okay. One one year and a few months in. Uh, <laughs> brand new, brand new baby girl. Uh, Fourteen months. Uh, I have three kids. Uh, Sixteen, nine, and fourteen months. So good stuff, man. Yes, good stuff. Well, why don't y'all start by telling us how you all got into the educational game? What what led you to education? Uh, well, I started out uh, as a probation officer um, for Tarrant County. Um, from there, I went to mental health. Uh, I worked in MHMR for like six years okay. uh, for a program called Assertive, Assertive Community Treatment. Um, I was still working with, with probationers, um, but they were, they were mentally ill. Um, man, you know what? I, one day I was sitting at my desk, and um, I don't know what happened. We, we was all looking for new jobs for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and, this, and, and one of my coworkers was like, if she, she pulled up this position, she was like, man, you, you would be really good with kids. Mm -hmm. um, I had a little bit of experience dealing with kids, but not not a lot. I just applied for the position and got lucky. Gotcha. What yeah, about man. you, man? What about you? Uh, man, I, I I never wanted to be in education. Uh, when I graduated college, I was like most newly graduates needed uh, a job, needed mm -hmm. needed income. Uh, took a position as a substitute teacher in Fort Worth, and was placed at. Uh, I am Terrell Elementary. Mm -hmm. Those that are familiar with I am Terrell, I am Terrell is historically the the the, the first African American high school prior to it closing down and reopening as an elementary. Yeah, yeah. Uh, still, I am Terrell was uh, predominantly African American. It was it was right in the middle uh, of the South Side, right in the middle of Butler housing, uh, and so I took a position as a as a long term sub there, and. Uh, Every day, I guess I was doing a good job because uh, the principal there, Dr. Brooks at the time, one of the most beautiful educators I've ever, mm -hmm. ever met, would ask me, say, hey, when are you going to go get your, your certification? I said, like, Dr. Brooks, <laughs> I, I, I don't want to be a teacher. This, this is, this is a, a means to an end. You know, mm -hmm. I just so happen I love the kids because I identify with them. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, and, and so I, I stayed at IM Terrell three years uh, and, and she continually would ask me, hey, when are you going to get your certification? Or she would always, when someone would come in, she was like, oh, this is Broderick, and he's he's an amazing you know, asset to the school. And I was still just a sub because yeah. I was like, yeah, I'm not going to do any sort of certification uh, program. So uh, long story short, 20 years later, I'm still I'm still in education. Uh, <laughs> spent time, in, uh, I started out – after uh, I Am Terrell, I, I did Gang Intervention, which is also a passion of mine, uh, and then went back in education as, as a classroom teacher, uh, and then transitioned to what we're doing now. So, professionally, I've worked with every single grade. Yeah, yeah. I've taught pre-K all the way up to, to high school. What did you prefer? Uh, 
I love high school. Yeah, yeah. I love high school. <laughs> I understand. <Yeah. laughs> well, what, why don't you explain what y'all do right now? I know what you do, but explain to the audience what y'all do. Uh, what we do uh, will be considered wraparound services. So wraparound services are kind of all the services that a student needs in order to be successful while they're in school. Mm -hmm. We take away, uh, if we try to take away every excuse for the student not to be successful. We deal with homelessness. Yeah. Uh, we deal with uh, at risk. Uh, we deal with so many different indicators, uh, first generation, uh, and we just want to make sure that those students have a plan when they graduate high school. Yeah, so, yeah. like, I try to tell the students, you, you know, your parents look at you differently the day that you get your diploma. The Absolutely. next day, they're, they're expecting you to have it all figured out. Yeah. And so we just try to mitigate that, that, that issue between graduation and that next step. So y'all basically are breaking down barriers yeah. and providing access. Yeah. We basically take the kids from point A to point B. Gotcha. Um, meet them where they are. Um, it can be you can be an A on a roll student with with family problems. Yeah. Um, you can be uh, uh, an F on a roll student, right, <laughs> <laughs> with no family problems. <laughs> yeah, but, you yeah. know, we 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 take them from we, and we sit down with them man, and we talk to them. Um, one of the most important parts to our our, our career, our job, is to um, to make sure that that they're taken care of throughout the entire time they're in our building mm -hmm. um, and then for them to have a plan when they leave. Um, so financial aid, scholarships, college tours, uh, we pretty much cover the entire gamut. And, and I have seen firsthand, man, I worked with you guys about three or four years. Mm -hmm. I seen firsthand the impact that you all have on kids, man. They, they gravitate towards you all. It is, you, you exemplify, when we talk about building relationships with kids, you guys do that all the time. So uh, is that just something that came naturally with you or what? Uh, I think so. Um, with me being from the east side, him being from the south side, we got Dr. Johnson, you yeah. know, another colleague. Uh, we all have different personalities, man, but when we come together, they just feel the energy in the room. Gotcha. Uh, of, of, you know, pretty much four, four African-American black men that want to see, see them be successful in whatever they decide to do. Good. So we have established that you guys have, have some really – well, great W two jobs, yeah. but <laughs> <laughs> everybody know no matter how much money you make on that W two, you gotta have a hustle. Yeah, yeah. It's millionaires out there. They're they're professional ball players that have two or three side hustles. I think they say you need six side hustles in order to, you know, establish yourself for the rest of your life. Why don't you guys go ahead and, and transition into your your side hustles and your, your businesses? And we'll start with you, man. Um, so one of the things uh, I want to talk about first is uh, Golding Bread Company. Mm -hmm. uh, me and my good brother here, uh, Broderick, uh, started this company actually while we were working at Crowley. Mm -hmm. uh, like I say, when we in that room, you just got the energy, you got the creativity, uh -huh. and uh, you know we both had beards. <laughs> and we was like, man, you know, we we need to. Hey, this is this is a new thing. This is a new way. Everybody taking care of their beards. Men men's grooming is important. Mm -hmm. uh, let's figure out something we can do. Um, and man, it took a while. It took us how long it take us to get get this together. Uh, well, it took us about a year to yeah. to pull to pull the ideas. Uh, I mean, when you see Gold Link, you see we 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 did everything mm -hmm. from the design you see on the package was something that me and him sat down and did together. Mm -hmm. uh, the packaging is something that that my partner takes extreme extreme meticulous pleasure in in making sure that our packaging is. Is, is flawless flawless yeah. if it's not, you know comparable to whatever is out there but exceeds because we want to make sure that the, the people that that buy our product is, is given a quality product uh and and doesn't feel gypped about the the price uh, but yeah man i mean it, it's funny Golding came about because uh me and me and me and my brother here clicked the moment we met Absolutely. and and and, and it, i i can't think back on a time when we weren't as close as we are now because it because it happened so fast and it happened so quick uh and, and him being the genuine person that he was i mean we this is it's, it's never been a labor of love this right here is kind of our heart Absolutely. you know because it's like your baby it's, a, yeah, it's our it's baby it's you know it, it, we, we love it uh, <laughs> and, and we and we try to show the the the, the love through through our products so how did that first conversation go down like y'all both had the beers <laughs> but what, like, how, how'd y'all first say, okay, let's let's look into doing something like this? Who whose idea was it? 
it was it was funny. We we just talked about it. I said, I think I I think I, one day I said, hey man, I thought about doing a beard oil. He was like, you know what? I thought I thought about that too. <laughs> and he was like, hey man, let's do that together. And I said, let's do it. And you know, normally, well for me, uh, when you throw an idea out to somebody, yeah. it, it, it it may take root, so it may not. From the moment that we talked about it, the next day we took steps. Mm-hmm. My, my 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 partner here, my brother, here, made sure that every day there was a step made and, and 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 it shocked me because uh, truthfully and honestly i had never experienced when he said okay let's do it to us us doing it you know and mm-hmm. and it kind of just that's what's so beautiful about it yeah because it, it the process was was organic the process it was easy was, it was easy well a lot see a lot of time you have these you know you have individuals have a business idea and when they go into it with someone else they don't have that relationship, so it goes south. Right. But you guys is like you said, it was genuine, it was organic. Right. Yeah. So, how did you know from from your minds to paper? How did that go down? How long did it take to formulate everything and to get everything into actual a, a business model? Um, like he, like he said, it took about a year. Okay, um, like starts on paper. Mm-hmm. Like he would write everything down, and we just keep bouncing ideas off each other. Let's do this. Let's do this. Yeah, and he yeah. was pretty good in Photoshop. What was it? What was it? What was it? The uh, program? Adobe. Adobe okay. Photoshop. So, yeah, okay. Photoshop. So, with the design, he was on computers. We was talking. I'm like, nah, let's do this. Let's do the crown. Let's let's put the beard on that. Let's, nah, yeah. let's not. And we just kept bouncing ideas off each other, man. And it, we just created it, man. I, to be honest with you, I think it was God, God ordained. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Because, man, there's no way. I could have did this by myself. Yeah, and you know he probably saying? think he couldn't have did it by himself. Yeah, I, I, I yeah couldn't, exactly. Man. Something like yeah. this, I, I I would have never thought that we would be in mass production mm-hmm. and be able to produce something like this. Like, man, we're 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 traveling the world with it. We're we're able to send it. Man, we sent some boxes to Africa. Yeah, it's crazy, yeah, man. It's, I it's, see some of y'all stories. Yeah. I'm like, good grief, it's, it's been fun, man. So so when you fun. talk about production, who produces it for you? Who who? Does the actual so product. we we get all our stuff manufactured overseas, okay, um, um, in the UK, um, and they do all of our all of our uh, production, okay. Um, but we man, and it was hard to find that. We were like, so we wanted to do everything here. We started everything here, uh-huh. um, but man, it was just so you know, so the cost. Yeah, yeah. So yeah when it come down to packaging yeah. and stuff like that, just the minimal cost. Mm-hmm. Um, we had to take a lot of the, uh, some of the stuff. So we we move in different parts, right? So LA. Mm-hmm. With some of the ingredients and stuff like that, then we in the UK with the packaging and stuff. So it's it's a lot of moving parts, gotcha. but you can get it, you know, get it to come together if you, uh, man, make those phone calls, make mm-hmm. those emails. Um, so that's how we that's how we was able to pull it all together. So if you have an idea, estimate of how many boxes you've sold total, <laughs> I, I know it's like man, I don't, a lot, <laughs> lot, lot. Yeah, <laughs> we like rough questions. Because we, 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 you know what, we we're not only we don't only do online sales. Yeah, you we go do, into stores and everything. We do vendors. Right. Uh-huh. Yeah, and then we we're in uh uh what how many uh maybe two or three beauty supply stores. Yeah, man. So when when I when I when I think about it, and and I know it's an ambitious comparison, but. We we were moving units out of the trunk like Master P, <laughs> you know. We 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 were, we were, mo- we, were we were moving units ourselves. Uh-huh. We, you know, we were hand we were hand to hand. We were you going you to- hand delivered me one there, right in the middle of the pandemic, man. man. I think that was ice cream. That was that was ice cream. Oh, yeah. One of y'all <laughs> dropped off. One of y'all dropped off the the. the the uh, beer cream as well. I think, I mean, I probably did. You probably both. did both. I probably did both. And yeah. we definitely going to talk about the ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> but y'all, man, we, y'all do it all. We, 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 we do it all, man. Yeah. And, 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 it, and it's us. Let me tell you what's crazy, man. I, I totally respect that because yeah. I can't tell you how many ideas I've had in my head. I'll be sitting watching Shark Tank. Mm. And then I'm like, man, I talk to my wife. We should go on Shark Tank or something. Try to get this out yeah. there. And then I don't roll with it because just too, it just seems like it's too much work. Then a year or two later, somebody else comes out with the same idea. I, I talked, I sat and talked to my wife about. It. That's happened at least five or t- five or six times. Yeah. So the fact that y'all had this idea, and y'all actually the next day started putting everything in, in the play, man. I, I got a lot of respect for that, and y'all been highly res- uh, highly successful. So, man, I appreciate kudos, man. Yeah, I'm man. definitely and like I said, I I'm I actually have the product myself, and I I can you know attest that it it, it works. And it's phenomenal. And it smells really good too, man. My yeah, really my man. favorite product was the was the the shampoo yeah. the beer shampoo man <laughs> feels good after you've done I, I think i ran out in like three days right. <laughs> you got your cover. all right good looking out good looking out good looking out okay so we talk about that why don't you talk to us about 
you know some of your individual ventures as well, man. Uh, man, like my partner here, man. I'm, I'm I've been a serial entrepreneur for a while. Uh, 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 my background is outside of education is martial arts. So uh, I have a, a a small private martial arts uh, school, I guess you would call it. Uh, that I teach, and I've been doing that for the last five years, Black Star Martial Arts. Okay. Uh, uh, but the next step up is, is is kind of a baby of mine, uh, my ice cream company that I'm that I'm proud of. Uh, it started. It's still small uh, because you know I'm still having so many other irons in the fire. But uh, it's something that I love to do, and and the people that love my ice cream love my ice cream. So. It's called Mixed Up Ice Cream Company. And and far as I know, I am the first black-owned ice cream company in Fort Worth. So even though how small it is, it, it doesn't matter. I was the first one. Uh, <laughs> you say I even delivered in the, in the height of the pandemic. I was on my bike delivering ice cream he, out. This, this man <laughs> delivered the ice cream, I think two pints of ice cream to my crib yeah. on the bike. That's I was it. like, wow, he dedicated. Right, right, right. <laughs> uh, and, 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 I, and I do all kinds of flavor. Uh, 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 my niche is uh, kind of a gourmet type of uh, artesian type of ice cream. Uh, very, very uh, good. Very, very decadent. Uh, so it's, it's not something you you want to eat when you're on a diet or if you're trying to <laughs> trying to you know shy back from the calories because I put all the calories in it. Uh, but he then does. He I, does. <laughs> <laughs> but then I became vegan, uh, and I also switched over to uh, I do have a small line of vegan ice cream. All school. You use that? Did you use the Almond or cashew I milk? I use the for that? Ca- cashew milk. For okay, that. that's right. Okay. Uh, and, and I have a very small market uh, to the vegans that that I deal with, right? So, uh, so the, the the martial arts, uh, the ice cream company, uh, and, and whatever else my partner here brings up, yeah. I say yes to. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and, we, and we and we talk and we talk about it a lot. He's like, "Hey, man, let's do this." I said, "Man, say less. You know, <laughs> you don't have to convince me." Uh, so whatever he comes up with, I, I'm right there with him. Gotcha. Yeah. yeah, that ice cream was off the chain. I know you had some couple of alcohol infused flavors oh, yeah. as well. <laughs> I didn't get that one. I got the I think the, the red velvet think, maybe. Oh yeah. man, my red velvet was the was the best seller. Yeah. yeah another one. What was the one you infused? It, it, it was the red velvet in cobbler. It was the Hennessy. peach cobbler, yeah. It, it was, was those two. Pe- yeah. Oh, Cause I put it on Facebook, man. I don't know how many people you got after that. Man, but, man, it was oh, off man, the chain. And I appreciate that because man. people that you referred are, are are some of my the the you know, when during the school year I scale back mm-hmm. because I can't keep up with the volume. Yeah. But the but the ones that that reach out to me like, hey man, I need this or I need that. I make sure that they're covered. And, and the people, some of the people that you referred to me, are a few of those people, and I appreciate that. Hey man, anytime, anytime. Yeah, man. Anytime. You've always been a supporter of us. Hey, man. always, man. That. Y'all, yeah, man. Are, y'all already you, know. Man. Yeah, for sure, man. That's why I had you on. So tell me real quick. Anybody that's thinking about getting into any kind of business, like how did you all register this particular business? Is it like? S Corp or, or oh this this is an LLC LLC okay LLC, okay okay yeah, yeah. why'd you choose to go that route um I don't, that's the route I've always went okay uh, yeah, I don't I haven't done an S Corp okay or any of the other ones I because you know it, it protects your personal assets absolutely okay. bottom absolutely. line okay All right for me okay um and that's that's how I've, I've said all my businesses are LLCs. Good. I good. may need to look into some S corps and some other stuff, but I ain't really got into that. So what are, what other businesses do you have under LLC? Uh, I have Eastmore Realty. Okay. LLC, you know, you know, I do real estate. See, I didn't um, know you, so I didn't. I thought you just re- worked for a broker. I didn't know you actually. I did do. An LLC. I do have. I do have a broker. Okay. But, you know, you still can LLC your name, right, for for tax purposes. That's actually yeah. that's smart. I've heard other people do that. I didn't know you were doing that. That's good stuff, man. Yeah, yeah. Now, why'd you choose to do that for real estate? Um, tax purposes. Okay. All right. All right. All right. All right. Yeah. Business write offs. Okay. Of that nature. Yeah. So let me ask you this, man: Is it if you if you are if you don't have an LLC and you are a realtor? Do you have the same tax protections or a little less protections? Um, I mean, you got to talk to my CPA. <laughs> 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 I, 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 it's, a, it's a lot of things that I, I just don't I don't get into because I don't I don't you don't even worry about it. Man, just, I, don't, I just I just yeah, got people yeah, yeah, that yeah. I trust. Got my you. CPA does does my taxes, man. I, like I run my write offs LLC. There's 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 tax protections for, for sure, right? Because you're running on the LLC. But um, man, as far as knowing the whole gamut. I couldn't even take. Got it, got yeah, it. But I, you I'm, I'm looking at if I'm in the green or the red. At the end. Yeah, yeah. There you go. That's, 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 that's one of two. That's when I'm talking about CPA. I'm in. I'm in the green. <laughs> am I paying this year or what am I doing? Yeah, there that's you the go. There I you got. go. So yeah. ultimately, the goal is not to 
owe a lot or get back a lot. The goal is to pretty much be right there on that line, like to Absolutely. balance it out yeah. to where you're not. When you make a certain it. amount of money, yeah, yeah, yeah you want to be. Don't worry, I'm, I don't worry about getting a refund. Yeah, yeah. yeah Just give I me, agree. give me, and give me to where I'm good. I'm in the green. That uh, so. A lot of people, they don't understand that when I say I don't want a refund, I just don't want to pay a lot. Because yes, you're giving that tax-free loan to the government every year, every, every month. Year, giving it up. Yeah. It's crazy, ain't it? Yep. But I think a lot of us have been conditioned to just give, 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 and then just they think we're magically getting a big old huge refund at the end of the year, and it's nah, not like that. Nah. But then our year, yeah, yeah. yeah them day, I mean, yeah. people, I know people, that they struggle throughout the year. Let's say they're short two or $300 every month. They get this fat refund check at the end of the year. Had they been getting that money all year, they wouldn't be struggling. Wow. So, yeah, that, that's that's smart, man. I think that we need to try to make sure we are as close as possible. If you need to have a tax professional, a CPA, or whatever, fine, go ahead and find someone. I, I think a lot of times we don't want to pay that money for them, but oh, they're worth their weight and gold, oh, man. man. She's amazing too, man. Okay, yeah, yeah. okay, okay. If you want to, I don't know if you want to give a shout nah, out. I ain't giving no shout out. <laughs> <laughs> no shout out. <laughs> Much respect. <laughs> hey, so are you still into the, the wholesale game or? Uh, You know what, man, I haven't, but I've been doing a lot of investing. Okay. Um, okay. The fix and flip. I'm in the fix and flip game for sure. Okay, so tell us about that. Um, Right now, man, I'm in, a, I don't know if you ever heard of crowdfunding. Absolutely, uh, I have. So I'm in, I'm in the crowd. I just joined a crowdfunding group. Okay. Um, so I did my first fix, fix and flip, uh, what, a couple of months ago. And uh, it was rewarding, mm -hmm. but, man, stressful. Yeah. Um, so uh, I I don't know what I, I don't know where I was at, but I was uh, I was going out to eat, man, and I, I was talking to this guy. He pulled up in a Lamborghini. <laughs> so when you pull up in something, I, I, yeah. I, I'm going to ask you some questions. Hey, man, what do you do? He's like, you know, I'm part of this uh, you know, this real estate group. And uh, what we do is is we, uh, we, we crowdfund. Um, crowdfunding is basically um, you get a pool of people to go in and then you own a percentage of uh, whatever property they buy and fix up. Okay. Um, so uh, that's new. Um, is it going to make me a lot of money? I'm not sure yet, but that's the game that I'm in. But but I guess the good thing, so the plus and minus of that is that you won't necessarily make as much, but it's less risk as well it's as you risk. going in on your own. What I'm learning, man, is uh, – as you can see, I don't do nothing by myself. Mm -hmm. I mean, of course, I'm, I'm a real estate agent as well. Yeah, 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 so, you yeah. know, it, that, that kind of comes with its own individuality. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I don't do no business by myself, man. It's, you like to actually it. partner. I, lo I love teamwork. I love working with somebody that uh, got the same energy and vibrations as I do. Good. Right? So, me and, like, like me and B, when we, when we hash out these ideas, like, I know something going to pop off at some point. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I am doing it. Talking about the ice cream a while ago, I'm like, hey man, this this something we need to just probably look more into as far as a storefront. Yeah, Cause so because this stuff is delicious, man. I it, love it, this man, ice cream. It, it, I'm gonna tell you right now, I, you know, I'm a I'm an ice cream connoisseur, man. I know Talenti is an ice cream. It's what custard or whatever, whatever you want to call it. And that uh, uh, is it. Uh, what's it called? Gelato, gelato. Mm -hmm. And then you got the Ben and Jerry's, the Hagen Dazs. Those are my favorites. But man, I'm gonna tell you, I'm just, I ain't saying this because because right. my boy, <laughs> man, your stuff blows that out the uh, water, man. Some, like man. Hand, I mean, yeah, hands yeah, down, yeah. hands yeah. down, yeah, got some. hands down. Yeah. So why don't you tell anybody who's watching how they could? I mean, I know you kind of slowed down a little <laughs> bit right now with the school year, but I know summertime is when it kind of yeah. popped back off. So tell anybody who want to get some how they would get it, right? Uh, uh, right now, uh, subscription based. If you go to uh, Facebook, so it, it's a very small. You know what? I'm a, and I'm gonna keep it that way right now. Is, yeah. is that this little small niche? Uh, if you get in, you get in type of thing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, but it, it's mixed up ice cream on Facebook, and and only only because <clears throat> only because uh, I, I want to continue to put in that that effort that yeah. me doing it. You know what I mean? Like yeah. every from from the packaging. From from the mixture to going to the store and, and getting the ingredients is me. Is you? Is you me. putting your heart and soul right, into it? Right, right. So yeah. uh, I, I like I like that. So when people tell me and I, like you said, you know that man, it's some of the best ice cream and and and, and it, it, people tell me that. And sometimes you know I'm like ah, yeah, I appreciate you saying that. You know, yeah, you have a relationship with me, so y'all know. You, I sometimes feel like you're just saying yeah, it, yeah. but I hear it so much. Uh, and, and when I eat it, I think it's delicious. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, I, I'm biased <laughs> to it. Uh, but, uh, yeah, if you go to Facebook, uh, Mixed Up Ice Cream Company, uh, I, I should be there. 
And if you and if you really want to try it, you know, shoot me a message and 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 you know, and and I'll I'll get back to you. <laughs> man, storefront, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Storefront. <laughs> Coming soon. Mr. Storefront. <laughs> do it, man. Do it. And, and it's funny you said that because, and even even with the gold, man, even with all the businesses that that we do, and you spoke about in the beginning about legacy. Mm-hmm. These are things that we want to pass to yeah, to our children. children. It's not nothing that we want to. We're trying to hoard amongst ourselves, yeah. uh, and that's another reason why I think it's successful because we don't hoard the the goodness of, of the of the benefits of it. You know what I mean? Because yeah. we believe that. Sharing and giving, giving is how you how you receive. Absolutely, and, and it's yeah. not a you know, and and it's not a, a giving in a in a, a, a greed sort of sense, but a giving in a, in a truthful and honest sense. Man, and you, that's why the things that we do are successful. Absolutely, and you just led me to my next conversation about you were talking about legacy, and let's have a little discussion about generational wealth. So we all make decent money in our in our W two jobs. Yeah. Why do we go so hard, man? Why do we have these side hustles. Me personally, like I, I hate being at home, you know, not doing anything. Of course I got family or whatever, but at the same time I feel like I need to be out there making money for my family. Right. Even you know, you know, I got the eight to four, but I feel like I need to whether it's real estate or whether it's another side hustle, I feel like I need to be doing something to help build that generational wealth. So why don't y'all talk a little bit about what you all are doing, you know, besides the businesses. Are you Investing just in real estate, or are you doing index funds, or what? How does that look? No, I don't know. I, and I know what you what you do as mm-hmm. far as you know a lot about that. <laughs> so uh, for me, man, it's a, a, a money management account. Mm-hmm, right? mm-hmm. So there's companies that do that for you. Mm-hmm. Like I say, see, one of the things about me is re- resources. Yeah, absolutely. Right? You got Westwood Holdings Group. You got Fidelity. You got Edward Jones. Mm-hmm. Um, you can to go. You can go sit with an expert to tell you exactly where to put your money. Mm-hmm. Um, as far as generational wealth with my son, uh, I'm teaching him how to do real estate contracts. How right. old is, is your son? My son's 17. So is he looking so at cost part time his job. license? That's a part-time job right now. Oh, okay. And look, okay. look, I'm sitting down with you. When I got a contract, hey, man, fill this out. Hmm. All right? Absolutely. And then I'm going to pay you this amount, this complete, do this application, and I'll tell you what you did right or wrong on it. All right? So I think, I think giving your kid a skill Skill set. I mean, money. That money is gonna come. Yeah, absolutely. If, you, if I don't, that pops got it, right? You yeah. you gonna have it. And yeah. I'll teach you the money management, but I need you to have a skill set absolutely. that you can always use. And me and you both know if you got a real estate skill set, you know how to do them contracts. You know yeah. how to negotiate. You're good. You good. You all that's right. a that's a good idea because I'm thinking like you know when my my son he's 15 now when he go to college, he's expressed a desire to get his real estate license. So that's something you can you can do while yeah. you're in school. He, you he don't just to have do to. That. Yeah. Okay, yeah. okay. He wants to get his license. Um, he wants to go to college for computer science. Okay. 4.0 GPA. Man, congrats. Um, so, man, I'm, I'm working on him, man. I'm, I, I hope that he uh, uh, just take, takes the right path. Uh, Absolutely. Looking, you know, use me as a role model. Right? Yeah, yeah, like for my sure. My pops can do it because my, my dad was like that. Right? Uh-huh. My dad was. Uh, I just saw hard work, right? Yep. Entrepreneur, hard work. Never really just had a lot of money, mm-hmm. but uh, but he had to go get a go get an attitude, go get a spirit, man. And I always mm. appreciated that about my pops. Yeah, and it's, it's, clearly he's passed it down, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, man? What does generational wealth look like to you? Man, it, it's funny that you that you use that word generational wealth right now because uh, I was having this conversation with myself maybe this morning and and just thinking about. Uh, I'm a first generation college student, mm-hmm. right? Uh, and the process for me to be the first generation wasn't an easy process because my mother didn't go to school. My mother's from a small town in in Texas, uh, and, and and when I grew up on the South Side, it, South Side of Fort Worth is is, is an economic was an economically I don't want to call it economic disadvantaged area now, but when I was coming up, it was it was a, it was a yeah. a, a, a lower income sure. area, yeah. uh, and we were lower income, so I've. I was thinking about the aspect of already breaking the generational curse for myself mm-hmm. uh, because I know for a fact I make double what my mother top salary ever was yeah. at this point. And she worked, she retired at 65. And when she retired, I was like, Mom, you sure you, sure you want to retire just because, you know, I don't want you to sit down. She was yeah. like, you know, Broderick, I've been working since I was six. I said, you know what, Mom, you, you right. Yeah. You right. So from six to 65 and, and I still make double. I, I've made that, you know, mm-hmm. from from the college graduates to the the business, uh, to think, and, and and but I, I say that to say that my children are going to surpass 
that, and that's why Absolutely. I do it. You that's know? generational wealth. Right, and, and, yeah. and it wasn't hard for me to surpass it, to surpass that. I mean, that was just me naturally getting to, to this point. Uh, but the excitement for me comes from the thought of, you know, my children surpassing what, what, I, what I'm done because they're going to be building from where I am. I don't have, you know, I built for my mother could, could stop, you know, they're going to build from where, you know, where I stop. And like I tell my boys, you know, I'm going to set the ball extremely high because yeah. that, that's, that's my job is to, is to set the ball high, yeah. you know, to see, to see that, that effort, to see that drive, you know, that's and exciting. Incredible. That's incredible. That's exciting yeah. to hear, man. And I think a lot of times, especially in, the, in our community, the, the, topic of money is so taboo man people don't want to talk about money and the only time you talk about money is what you can't do or what you can't have it's it's like generational poverty so the fact that we even sitting here as a group of black men talk about generational wealth to me is important man and, and we've had a conversation about becoming millionaires soon mm -hmm. and it's one of those things where people are like oh a million dollars ain't what it used to be but like hell right a million dollars yeah, still man. a lot of money it ain't bad a lot of money, <laughs> yeah, yeah it's a lot of money million dollar yes. net worth that's better than where i used to be negative two hundred fifty thousand right. dollar net worth right. so hey. just having these conversations man and, and and normalizing the conversations about money and generational wealth man it's important to me and i'm glad you brothers had the opportunity to come on and discuss this topic with me and and your businesses we're gonna kind of wrap things up but i want to know if there's anything else y'all want to add before we uh, Before we wrap it uh, up, man. Uh, but I, 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 I see what you're doing as far as and I appreciate it. As far as uh, you know, the, the podcast, the money management is important, man. Generational wealth is very important, man. So I, I really appreciate that. I see what I see some of the stuff that you post. I be reading some of the stuff you post about your kids, and I'm like, man, what is this? What is what is this <laughs> index fund he's talking oh. about? So, I, so it most it, it gets my attention for sure. I appreciate um, it, man. man and, yeah, yeah, man, so, space. Yeah, man. Yeah, so I'm, I'm gonna be tapping it. in with you on some of this stuff. Absolutely, uh, I'm absolutely. Some questions about that. Absolutely, and I appreciate that. For hey, sure. no, yeah, I appreciate yeah. the feedback. We man. Appreciate, appreciate you having it, us here, man. man. Thank you, yes, sir. Continue yes, success. Sir. I see those numbers going up. Oh man, yeah, keep hitting that, man. Appreciate it, man. We trying to get there, man. You know, we trying to. I think the more people we get the word out to, I believe in lifting as you climb, you know, yeah. have, having this dialogue and sitting down with people, whether they look like you or not, just providing that outlet. And and I think we're going to continue to to grow as a people, man. So I appreciate you guys. It, and man. anything man. else that y'all want to add before we, we wrap up? That's it, man. Go, oh, link. go to, go to <laughs> goldlinkbeardcoat.com. Oh. Dot com. All yeah, right. Go check us out. We got all the all the the male grooming products you will need for your beard. We'll get you taken care of. Absolutely. Yes. That's it, brother. Appreciate right. it. Appreciate y'all. <laughs> well, hey, appreciate you all tuning into another episode, and you all take it easy. Continue to build that generational wealth, everyone. <laughs>